Hello friends, uh, welcome to Tech Lake video tutorials. Uh, in this uh, ongoing videos, uh, Databricks videos. So today video I'm going to give you a complete notebook uh, because last three years, if you observe Databricks notebooks, they added a lot of features and uh, UI changes also, you can observe uh, a lot of changes they did in last three years. So, I have created multiple videos on Databricks, which is a two and a half years back or three years back. Uh, again, I'm going to do videos with the latest version because Databricks said there are a lot of changes. So, today what we will do, we we'll start with a Databricks notebook. What is Databricks notebook and uh, how to use Databricks notebooks and features. Okay, this is my Databricks workspace. This is my Databricks workspace. And if you go to the home page, if you go to the home page, there is an option called create notebook. Okay, if you want to upload any data, there is an option called upload data. So just I'll highlight here. If you want to upload any file, you can upload here. If you want to create a notebook, you can create a notebook. So today, first we'll understand notebook features. Then later we'll understand more related to uh, data related. Okay, let's create a notebook. So once you click on create a notebook, you will you, you get an option in a window that you need to provide a name, you need to choose a default language and there, once a notebook is available, which you can go with any language, okay, with the default language which you can choose this. Introduction. And you can choose the cluster. You can choose the existing cluster or you can create a new cluster as well. And this is a new visualization uh, at notebook so they added uh, recently so even you can try it out even you can learn more it will route it to documentation just i'll close this just i'll close this if you're looking for sample notebooks so if you go to the get uh, get started guide there is a get started guide you can go through those there uh, you can find a lot of documentation so here it will be routed to Microsoft website page. So there you can find a lot of documentation. So that's about here, the home page. Even there is an option called Quick Start Tutorial. So this will give you complete notebook features. If you click on Start Tutorial, it will create one notebook for you. You see this, yeah. It's about just uh, giving a brief information about a notebook, brief information about notebook. Okay, so then I'll open a new notebook which I created a uh, one and uh, I'll explain with this, this notebook, standard notebook as well. So go to that, choose this. This is the new notebook. It's empty, nothing is available. Okay, just I'll highlight. A notebook menu, notebook name, notebook default language and uh, Edit history. So edit history means whenever you do changes, right, that will be tracked here. And uh, if you want to run all, you can run all. And the cluster, you can select the cluster. And if you want to schedule, like a workflow, schedule, uh, scheduling a particular notebook. And if you want to share this notebook to anyone, right, so there you see another plus symbol. Down, up. If you click on this plus symbol, it will create a new command. Like this, you can go with n number of commands. Suggested one is maximum 100 commands. Suggested one is maximum 100 commands. Another one is the entire notebook displaying output. I will show you that. Like consider the different language is Python. So if you can write any Python code here. This is my first Python language print statement. So I'm going to print this. Okay, now. So this is the output. Like this, even you can print a file system, you can use the data frame, whatever it is. The default language here, it is a Python. We'll call it as a magic commands. Even you can run a shell script, even. You can run percentage as such shell commands because the Databricks backend cluster is Ubuntu cluster. So there you can run any shell command, shell script if you want to run. You can run this percentage as such. And percentage FS, 
which is a file system if you want to interact with the file system the backend is a distributed file system dbfs databricks file system or even you can mount a data lakes blob storages so that is also possible the, those also you can use this by default you will get a mounted path so that is s3 location mounted path databricks data sets it is having a plenty of folders it is having plenty of folders okay so even you can use a percentage fs working on file system file system means listing files and so other than this which you can use other languages percentage md so markdown okay so markdown so even you can move the cells up and down you see this cut 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 paste even you can do control x and paste here Wait. sorry okay so I pasted here even you can move up and down there is a option move up and down my mouse is not working properly yeah okay this cell if you want to move up and down you can move this so that's the flexibility and uh, uh, here you will get option called run current cell the current cell okay just earlier it was uh, copy paste at that right that was issue now you can run above or run below so markdown document so percentage md is a logic uh, magic command for markdown document so like if you can give any documentation here you can give any documentation that will help you a lot then other than this even you can run sql using just a percentage sql like show databases so it will show available databases so only well, default one database is available okay even this result when you can if you want to access in PySpark, you can access as a data frame called this one so display the data frame here it is underscore sqldf okay the sql whatever the sql uh, it is returning our output that output will be there in a data frame even that data frame which you can use in python okay so you can use in python then even you can use in other languages like scala percentage scala percentage r okay so like this which we can go with the magic commands i want to upload one file just i'm going to upload one file click on upload data click on upload data so the home page you you can upload any file here or you can go to your notebook so there is a file option right so this file option which which we can there is an option called add data you can upload data to dbfs or add data so upload data to dbfs means you will get this window specify the location where you want to upload like i want to upload uh, under the file store under the tables so select the file if you have a data file you can select that file so i have this data file then next once you upload the file you will get a read api you see this PySpark data frame read api pandas data frame read api r language and scala okay so even if you want to copy you can copy that so now you can if you want to create the data frame that whatever we uploaded a file then you can create a data frame so if you go to the file so there you will you'll have an option called upload data then the file, data file is uploaded into this location and uh, by default it is giving api to read data and create a data frame and if you want to display the data you can use a display function you see this Okay, now if you go to the file, there is an option called share. If you want to share this notebook to anyone, you can share this. 
okay you can share to existing you developers developers in a project which you can give a privileges like read run edit manage release and which we can share and even if you want to import any notebook normally we'll be importing that workspace it may be user's workspace or shared workspace okay which you can right click you'll get option import you can import a notebook or you can import from url okay any of these files can be imported now and if you want to clone clone means copying to the same notebook so duplicate that is called clone so now two notebooks are available if you go there notebook notebook one because default it is created that and if you want to rename if you go to the file there is option called rename you see this so directly you can double click here here also you can do the rename this time renaming underscore new now if you want to change the language there is option called change language consider i can change language to sql now when i change the language to sql by default it is added percentage python you see this it is added percentage python okay so this is about creating a notebook cloning notebook and renaming notebook and if you want to move this notebook from one location to another location there is option called move move to shared so i want to move to shared instead of user folder i'm moving to shared and the privileges if you want to mention you can mention that all users are specific users now this notebook is available under shared workspace not in users earlier it was under use user workspace now it's at shared workspace is the notebook now there is an option called run all if you click on run all it will execute from first command to last command first command to last command on this cluster on this cluster only one cluster is available it is going to execute on that cluster first command to last command so here it was it is like it was raised exception saying that so we use this show databases and the language that we use the sql so that's why that normally if you use a python uh, type then it will create this data it will return this data from but which it changed to python to sql now if i change to python now if i run it all okay then now the default language is python and uh, here now you see this the scale d of it is written and now that is working fine so whenever you go with a percentage sql and if you are using a notebook type is python then it will return new data frame that data frame you can use in python okay if it is there in a sql that notebook type is sql then it won't return that okay now so that's about run all and uh, you can attach the, any other cluster only one cluster is available if you want to create a new cluster there is an option called creating cluster you can choose any of this cluster type now and the schedule if you want to schedule this notebook there is an option called schedule every day every week every month every minute every hour and time zone you can choose and the cluster also you can choose okay consider every day Consider now time is 3.15, sorry, 3.19, so I want to run at uh, 3.21 ACI time. And if you want to create a new cluster, you can create a new cluster, or if you want to use existing cluster, you can use existing cluster. Are you looking for a notification? You can use alerts when job starts, when job success, when job failure, which you can use this, then create. So I schedule this. And that you can find in the workflows. If you go to the workflows, you see this. So this will be triggered exactly at 3.21 PM IST time, IST time. Okay. And uh, go to the notebook again. We'll revisit uh, after one minute, because now it's at 3.20, another one minute it will be triggered. So that's a bit of schedule and share so as i told you right if you want to share this notebook to any other developers which we can go with a share option and uh, if you want to hide this we can hide this there is a navigation bar if you want to hide or if you want to show 
you can show this. Because here you'll get a search window. That search window will help you a lot. A lot of features are available here in this. You can search if you have a thousands of notebook, you can search particular function, particular variable, particular table in that. Okay. That will help you a lot. Then if you want to export this notebook, you can export as a DBC file. You see it is exported as a DBC file. And you can export as a source file. Source file means python.py file. You can export as IPython, IP, okay, IPYNB file. And if you want to export as HTML, you can export as HTML. So this is HTML. HTML, whatever we created a notebook, that notebook in HTML. Okay, now. So under file, one is mode. Delete is not available. Delete only available in community edition. Here, delete is nothing moving to trash. Okay. And as I told you, revision history will be available. You can click on this re recent uh, activity or version history. So it will be shown in the right side. The right side, you see the notebook revision history. Okay. Complete history. And there is an option called, you see this, last edit was four minutes ago. If you click on this, you get the same one. Even if you go to the file, so there also you will be, you'll see version history and uh, you can exit this version history. And there is an option called comment. Consider your project is having a multiple people, working a multiple people, your team lead, uh, or some external review, or if they're reviewing your code and they want to provide the comments, so they can select a particular topic and uh, they can go with the comments. They can go with comments. So they can select anything. So automatically when they select, do you see comment symbol is enabled. They can click and they can provide comments. Okay. So that's about the comments option, which any notebook, any command, which they can highlight and they can provide the comments. Please remove display function. Normally we when we are moving to production, we will avoid this displaying data because that notebook maximum it can uh, it can display 20 MB of data. So if you have more display or functions, right? So what will happen? You'll get a issues. So to avoid that, we will remove this display functions or comment this display only for unit testing purpose. Okay, that's about comments. It is available here and. Uh, if you want to clear that revision history, you can clear that revision history. If you go to this, individually, you see this. Okay, individually, you can see that this version, if you want to delete, this version, if you want to delete, this version, if you want to delete, or restore, there's an option called restore this version. This is the latest version. Okay, now, and if you go to the edit, edit the same, like a cell cuts, cell, paste cell, it depends on operating system. If it is uh, uh, Windows, Control X, Control C, Control V, same copy, paste, cut. If it is uh, Mac, then Command C, Command V, Command X. Then deleting a cell, two times D if you press, then it will press this. So when you are deleting, right, it will ask the confirmation saying that, are you sure you want to delete this command? So delete it. Then Control Z, is a undo control z is a undo so whatever i deleted i reverted that and if you want to find and replace there is an option called find and replace which you can search a particular character and you can replace replace or replace all so this will help you a lot when you are searching something consider i'm searching df1 so here okay so i, I replace with the empty so it is replaced here okay So this is about replace, find and replace. And then uh, Python identification. So default, you can see the four. If you want to decrease to two, you can decrease to two. Okay, when it comes to Python cells, right? That identification default identification. And even you can format entire notebook or individual notebook command also you can format. So normally when you go with a SQL, if you have a multiple lines of code, 
SQL code will be formatted. So that's that's about format cells, format notebook. If you want to select all cells, all select is selected. And if you can, you can copy and all there is option called again paste. Okay, so let's you see this command one. So here command 10. So if you want to paste everything or maybe another like consider. So when it comes to copy paste, so selecting individual command, then control C, control V, okay, copy paste it. Or like multiple commands, I want to select control and select. Okay. So I copy pasted all commands. So you see this. First command is, this is my document. Similarly, after 10th command, so this is, this is my document. Copy pasted all commands. Okay. So this way, which we can go with copy pasting cells, which is available here. And if you want to move up and down, which you can go with the control option up and down. And similarly, view option. So default is standard. If you are looking for only result, it will display result. You can't see the code. You see this. If you're looking for a side by side, code one side, a result one side. You see this. Left side code, right side result. So side by side uh, is not looking that much. Uh, it's not much impressive. You'll have a confusion. You'll have a confusion. So always standard is uh, best looking because code and down you see the result now so side by side is preferable if you have a uh, bigger screen and then uh, like a width is more and uh, height is less that time it will help you okay so then show line numbers so here you see this i have uh, this option called show line numbers if you click on this it will show the line numbers and if you deselect this, you can't see the line numbers. Similarly, show command numbers. Show line numbers, show command numbers, which we can use this option. Okay. Show table content. The table content is nothing but whatever we used a percentage MD, right? So that will be, you can minimize this. You can expand this. Okay. That's it. Table content. Collapse. All headings, so whatever headings are there, you can you see these two headings are there, right? The first heading, then second heading. Then you can click on this plus, you can see all commands inside that, all commands inside the cells, cell commands. Okay, so this is about a view and then a top navigation bar, so you can hide. Okay, there's an option called here also, and the view also here also top navigation bar okay and a smart quote and the bracket matching plus theme so default is light theme if you want to change the dark theme you can change the dark theme here it is the dark theme okay so if you are comfortable in dark theme you can change to dark theme if you are comfortable in light theme whatever developer choice okay so there is no difference in performance only theme just a developer view developer light and dark and run which we can go with a run the entire notebook that is run all so here also you can see here also you can see it will run first command to last command it will run first command to last command if you want to stop you can interrupt this so i interrupted that and if you go to run there is a run all above so consider if you are in a consider third command so if you want to run here itself is available run allow, all above so top commands will be executed or run below from here to down here to down all commands will be executed so that is called run all above run all below and go to the last run cell so the last run cell here is this one okay directly it will go to that particular cell and that if it is running, you can interrupt. But currently nothing is running, that's why it is not showing. 
And if you want to restart the compute, directly you can restart from here. If you want to attach, detach, you can use this. Earlier it was not available, now it is available. So here also you can see this. So this is the compute which is there. Detach, detach and reattach, restart, terminate. So these are our options available. And here also you can see this options. And if you want to clear the output, it will clear the output. So that user session, whatever uh, notebook output is there, that output it will clear. And your variables, everything session will be there. And if you go with the clear state, then it will remove user variables, user functions, everything. User session will be purged. That is clear state. And the clear state and clear both. Okay. Output and state both you can clear. That is one option. And the clear state and run all. First, it will clear state is nothing but user memory. Whatever user is created in this notebook, whatever I created in this notebook, data frame variable functions, it will clear. Then run all. So run all means first command to last command, it will execute. When this will help you clear state, right? Sometimes the browser is stuck and it is taking more time. If you want to clear the old state and then run it again. So sometimes because of you are displaying more data on a browser, right? A browser it utilizes more RAM, so that some, sometimes your system will be slow. So for that, just you can go with a clear state, and clear state and clear cell output, then you can run all. So these are available options, and this is about documentation. The shortcuts, all shortcuts you can find here, edit mode and command mode shortcuts. And the documentation and the Databricks support. So directly it will be routed to Databricks website, support website, okay? So that's about help. Databricks community webs, community website and the support website, both it will be routed directly from here. Okay, this is about notebook features, notebook features. It's showing as a menu, you can see here, file, file, you can see this. And now if you go to the workflow, we create, we schedule a job, right? If you go to the job runs, 9, uh, 321, we schedule a job. You see this, 321, it is executed. If we click on that output, you can see the completed job output. Just it is opening. Looks like my browser. Yeah, so the right side you can see about the job information, task ID, task job ID, task run ID, and uh, uh, executed by or run by started time, job finish time, total duration, job status, which notebook it is executed, and which compute it is executed, and the complete uh, notebook output complete notebook output. If you want to export this as HTML, that output you can export as HTML. That notebook execution output. Okay. So this is about complete data bricks. Notebook walkthrough. Notebook walkthrough. So which you can use in multiple languages, which you can use in multiple languages. And uh, there are multiple features are available, like uh, one, you can call one notebook in another notebook. Consider if you have another notebook, consider if I clone this notebook. So we have a two notebooks now. So if I want to call that notebook here, I can use a percentage run, and then that notebook name introduction underscore new so you can execute that notebook so whatever notebook it is having a documentation and output everything it will display you see this so that is percentage run so percentage run is option one we can call one notebook in another notebook and the db it is also available like widgets multiple things are available okay this is about So I executed one notebook in another notebook. So I call this notebook, new notebook into this notebook. Okay, just the percentage run, your notebook name. So this way, 
which we can utilize databricks notebooks for data engineering or data science projects and you'll get a lot of benefits from this thank you thank you for watching my videos if you're not subscribed please subscribe my channel see you in another video thank you have a good day